Are you tired of just hearing sound and want to start seeing it instead? This is an acoustic phased array, a camera for sound. The sound camera can be used for a variety of different purposes, from industrial things like detecting leaks in compressed air systems or quality control, to more everyday applications like finding your phone or figuring out who keeps farting at the office. It works by using tiny timing differences between each of these microphones to pinpoint the source of a sound. Here, the array is tracking a speaker that's playing the sound of a very quiet air leak. And this video demonstrates using the array to quickly locate the source of a sound. And this is the same video, but with a different method of visualizing the data from the camera. The acoustic camera has three main parts, an array of 96 digital microphones to receive audio data, an FPGA to capture and forward the data, and an Ethernet transceiver to send the data to a computer. The entire device was assembled by hand, including all 96 tiny microphones. An FPGA is used because a computer would have trouble keeping up with 100 microphones all at once. The internal workings of an FPGA are quite complicated, but the basic idea is probably something you've already figured out in the way that we all do homework. Now, say you've got five homework problems that each take you about an hour to do. You're supposed to do them in order. So you go one through five, and it takes you five hours to get your homework done. But of course, nobody actually does this, unless you're a teacher, in which case you can leave the video now. Yeah, we all totally do this. Instead, what everybody does is them and a couple of friends each take one of the homework problems, and then you just combine your answers at the end. The FPGA does much the same thing for the microphones. It's got a bunch of little components to it, each of which takes one of the microphones, and then they just combine their output to send to the computer. The final step of the process is something called beamforming which is how the computer takes the data from the microphones and figures out where the sounds came from. This relies on the way that sound moves through air. So if we imagine we've got a speaker here, then sound that comes out of it is going to move outward in a sphere. So we can start drawing the waves as they come out of the speaker. We can see that they hit the first microphone in the array here. Now we've got a graph here of time versus when the sound wave hits each element in the array. So we hit this one first, so we'll draw our first dot there. Then we'll keep moving this sound wave forward. You can see it hits this element next. So we draw another point there. Then it hits this element, then this one, then this one. So we draw our points on the graph there. Now, this is the data that comes into the computer. It doesn't know anything about this speaker or how these waves moved. It just knows when each of these microphones saw the sound. So our challenge is to figure out from this where the speaker was. And the way we do that is basically just to draw a line through all our points, and then draw another line at a right angle to that line, and that is where our speaker was. The first method that we explored for beamforming is called delay and sum. Say we want to focus the array at the center. If the sound source is sufficiently far, a wavefront the source generates will hit the array of microphones all at the same time. If we sum the signals of the microphones, they will constructively interfere and will generate an output with a high amplitude. If we have a sound coming from a 45 degree angle, as seen on the left side diagram, it will hit the microphone array at different times because of the delay caused by the unequal distance between the sound source and the microphones. If we sum those signals up, they will add to the resulting signal at different times 
so it will have a lower overall amplitude than the sound coming from the center. This essentially blocks out signals coming from anywhere else than the dead center. Let's look at an example with a sound source moving from left to right over a period of a couple seconds. At first, the sound is at our left. The image on the left shows a heat map of the amplitudes of each region. If we apply a threshold, we notice that the loudest source is indeed coming from the left. After a couple seconds, we run it again. We apply a threshold, and now the sound source is coming from the center. After a few more seconds, we can confirm that the sound source is now coming from the right, as expected. A less versatile, but more computationally efficient alternative to this is frequency domain beamforming. So the first thing that we do is we take the data from each microphone and immediately multiply it by both the sine wave and the cosine wave at the frequency that we're looking at. And this has the effect of filtering it and giving us the phase and magnitude of that frequency in that microphone. So we take our data signal represented as plus and minus one instead of one and zero, and then multiply it by this by each wave individually, and then sum up each of those values across the entire wave. Then we take the, sign, the sum from the sine wave and treat that as the imaginary component of a complex number. And we sum up the cosine wave in the same way and treat that as the real component of this complex number. So what we end up with now, after we do this on every microphone, is an array of phases and magnitudes for each microphone. So to then generate our actual image, we first look at the resolution of our image and the field of view of our image to figure out for each pixel, what angle of arrival do we expect the sound to come from? So in this case, a pixel, say here in the image, might correspond to 20 degrees in X, so 20 degrees off center in X, and zero degrees in Y. A pixel up here would correspond to say 20 degrees in X and 10 degrees in Y. So once we've got these two angles, we go and compute, based on our array geometry, how we expect the signal to move across the array. So in this case, the blue is the wave front, like we showed earlier, how it, propagates around, how it propagates across the array. And our green lines are, are the distance that that wavefront has to travel between hitting an individual microphone, one of these black dots, and hitting the center of the array. Now the center of the array is chosen arbitrarily with our zero, that could be anywhere, but we use, we use the center of the array because it's easier. So we want to compute the length of those green lines because that's going to tell us how far the wave had to travel, which is going to tell us how long it takes the wave to get from a microphone to the center of the array. So that's simply the sine of this angle times the distance between the center of the array and that element. Now we do this for both x and y and then just add up those two distances, then divide it by the speed of sound and multiply it by the frequency, and we get out a phase for that microphone, microphone that we would expect for that angle of arrival. So if we imagine we have only a single sound source at exactly this point, then this is what this array would look like. So we then invert this array, we just take the negative uh, of the phase for each of these elements, and then for every, and we generate uh, a set of these arrays for every single pixel in our output image. So, and we do, we do this, this computation at the very beginning of the program, because these uh, tables don't change. So once we want to generate our image, we look at a specific pixel, we find its uh, table of phases that we would expect if our source is actually coming from that direction. And we then multiply this set of complex numbers by our actual microphone data. And since this is what we would expect and this is what we actually got, if the two line up, then, that would, then since complex numbers when added together add their phases together, that should align the phases of every microphone uh, in the array. So once we do that, we just add up all the microphones together, and if there's a strong signal in that direction, we'll get a very large complex number. If they don't line up, then they'll move around in different directions, and they'll cancel out, and we'll get a small number. So we simply take the magnitude of the sum of the product of our microphone data times the lookup table for that position in the image. We sum those up, we take the magnitude of that vector, and that is the value for that pixel in the image. We repeat this for every pixel in our image, and that gives us our final image.